Have you ever stopped to wonder how that weather forecast on your phone, you hear on the radio or watch on TV actually gets made? There's a lot more to it than just looking out of the window. Behind every forecast is a complex process involving satellites, supercomputers, and meteorologists working around the clock every day of the year. So let's break it down. There are three key steps to creating a forecast. Step one, know what the weather is doing right now. Before we predict what the weather will do, we need to know exactly what it's doing right now. We use a vast network of observations to tell us if it's raining, snowing, foggy, frosty, or all of the above if it's a classic British day. We collect detailed measurements like air pressure, temperature, and wind speed, basically all the weather's vital signs. These are then quality checked and fed into our supercomputer as the starting point for a forecast. But, and here's the interesting bit, it's not just surface level data we care about. We need to understand the whole three-dimensional structure of the atmosphere. So how do we actually observe the weather? Well, we have a whole suite of clever tools. Land surface stations measure conditions near the ground. Satellites capture imagery from space. Weather boys monitor ocean temperatures and wave height. Weather balloons float up into the sky to measure the atmosphere in 3D. Radar maps where rain is falling, and lightning detectors pinpoint thunderstorms and provide early warnings. And because the weather doesn't respect borders, we collaborate with weather providers around the world, sharing data. What's happening over continental Europe can affect whether your weekend picnic is going to be sunny or a soggy mess. So we need to know what's going on. Each day, the Met Office receives millions of observations taken throughout the day. However, there are large areas of ocean, inaccessible regions on land, and remote levels in the atmosphere where we have very few or no observations. To fill in the gaps, we can combine what observations we do have with forecasts of what we expect the conditions in between to be. This is a process called data assimilation. Step two, work out how it's going to change. This is where the supercomputer comes in and things get seriously high tech. All those observations, once quality checked, they're then fed into our supercomputer that runs complex weather models several times a day. And this isn't just any computer. It's capable of doing 60 quadrillion calculations per second. That's 60 followed by 15 zeros. No, I didn't make that up. To calculate how the current atmosphere will change over time, the supercomputer uses a number of complex equations, which are repeated many times. Each time the forecast is stepped a few minutes further into the future, and this enables us to produce forecasts from just a few hours ahead to a climate prediction for the coming 100 years. Our latest supercomputer is the first cloud-based supercomputer dedicated to weather and climate science. It's powered entirely by sustainable energy, and it doesn't just forecast the weather, it also models future climate risks like floods and wildfires. Step three. Meteorologists fine-tune the details. Once the supercomputer has done its job, you might think, great, forecast done. But hang on, there's more to it. Our meteorologists, yes, real humans, work 24-7 to review what the models are saying. They compare our in-house forecasts with those from other global centers, check them against the latest observations, and if something doesn't look right based on their knowledge and experience, they adjust things. They look at everything from rain and snow to temperature and wind. The changes they make could be critical. For example, if the temperature dips just one degree lower than expected, that could be the difference between frost or no frost and whether a lorry needs to go out and grit the roads or not. Those little tweaks, they really matter, especially to the people depending on them. Like councils, airports, energy companies, and yes, festival goers hoping they won't need their wellies. This is also where I come in. The forecast data from our supercomputer feeds directly into the graphics system you see on screen. And here's a little behind the scenes secret. As a meteorologist, I sometimes need to make small adjustments. For example, if the computer shows a thick blanket of cloud, but the latest data suggests it's more likely to be scattered patches, I can update the forecast to reflect that. Cloud cover can affect temperatures too, so if the cloud changes, I might need to tweak the temperature forecast as well. These changes help us to tell a more accurate and useful weather story. You can help. Using our app, you're able to fine tune your own forecast. Whilst the weather symbols can give a great overview for what's going to happen, by checking the maps, you can get more information. 
if it's a showery day. Check the rainfall map to see how widespread and fast moving the showers are expected to be, and then work out how likely they are to affect you. You can also view the radar showing rainfall over the last six hours to compare what actually happened with what was forecast, so you can see if things are going to plan. So that's how we do it. Next time you check the weather, you'll know exactly how the forecast was created. It's science, satellite, supercomputers, and a lot of skilled people working together to make sure you're prepared for whatever the skies bring your way. We know you rely on these forecasts to plan your day, your activities, even your outfit. So it's important that we get it right. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe as we have many more videos like these, including an upcoming one looking more in depth at the capabilities of our new supercomputer.